None of the twelve participants in this séance are actors or stooges. If you want to take part in this séance, you will need a pen and paper, a wine glass, all the letters of the alphabet on separate slips of paper, or you can use Scrabble tiles, and a flat surface like a table. You'll have time to assemble these later on. Good evening. Tonight we're here at Elton Hall in East London which until 1983 was used as a training centre for medical students, and since then it's laid abandoned in the middle of a busy street. I would ask you at home to involve yourself in this séance, and I've also invited 12 students from around the country to participate in tonight's events. Now, the 12 students were chosen by placing advertisements around different universities, and there was a particular sort of person that I was after that would most authentically replicate the sort of people that would go to Victorian séances. First of all, they had to be open-minded about the paranormal. I also held a series of suggestibility tests to choose the people I felt would be most responsive to the idea of a seance. But the temptation at home may be to believe these people are stooges, but they're not. They have no idea what's going to happen beyond the fact that we're going to attempt a seance. And by the end of tonight, all but one of these students will be dead. That's not true. I mean, I'd give them about a week. Seances date back to the 1800s, after three sisters by the name of Fox claimed to be able to contact the dead. They toured America with their demonstrations and attracted the rich and famous, and by the end of the century, seances had taken off all over the Western world. Spirits were manifested, tambourines flew, ectoplasm impossibly erupted from entranced mediums. Then, after 40 years of this, rather embarrassed by what they'd started, one of the sisters, Margaret Fox, confessed that they were frauds, The miracles which had started it all off had been a scam. But her confessions made very little difference, and spiritualism continues to appeal to many people today. I don't believe in spiritualism personally, I find it quite ugly, but I am interested in the sorts of techniques used by fraudulent Victorian mediums, and I'm interested to see whether these techniques can be used to affect a modern sceptical audience. So, let's go meet our guys. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello there. Uh, welcome to Elton Hall. Hope you enjoy your evening. Can you come through with me into uh, this room here? Thank you. You want to sit in the first couple of rows? Okay, thank you. All right, so before we start, I just want to try something very quickly with you. What I'd like you all to do is to uh, have in your mind the name of somebody you know who has died, somebody who's uh, passed on, and uh, information about that person. Really have this right in the front of your mind now, and what their name was, what they looked like, what interests they had, um, what their relationship was to you as well. Will you all think of somebody for me? Just sort of do that now. Have that in your head. Great. Okay. And really concentrate on that person. Really have an image of, yep, great, so I can do this with you. All right, thank you. Look at me for a second. So the person that you're thinking of, it's a lady, isn't it? Yeah. And this is somebody who died when they were fairly old, I think. And as you imagine, this is quite a shortish lady. And I think quite large, you sort of remember sort of fairly large glasses when you think back to it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, when you think about it, something about flowers, what's that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, something, did she collect flowers? She, or was she was the owner of a flower shop. She was owned, owned a flower yeah. shop, that's really interesting. Great. And she, um, you know, it, was, it was your grandmother, yes? Yeah. And her name is... Laura or Nora? Nora. Noreen? Nora. Yeah, Nora. Nora, excellent. Nora. Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, so what you've just seen there is a fraudulent technique used by mediums in the Victorian times. There's a trick to it in a way, okay? But in your head, you make it convincing, and that's what's important. And a lot of seance really is about this. You know, I am very skeptical about a lot of spiritualism, but I would ask you tonight just to join me in a spirit of open mindedness and exploration. All right? So, let me explain why I've gathered you all here today. 
On February the 27th, 1974, a tight-knit clique of 12 students gathered in a room downstairs, uh, led by this guy, Nicholas Gad. Let me just show you that picture. I'm going to show the camera. And I'll pass it around so you can all look at it too. On a given signal from Gad, who was a particularly charismatic member of the group, they drank between them eight pints of bleach. It was a suicide pact. And within half an hour, they were all dead. That's all of them apart from Gad, who survived and moved to Australia, and some years later he died in a car crash. Now, since that incident 30 years ago, there have been over 40 reports of paranormal phenomena, hauntings and sightings and so on in this building. Now, that may be no more than just coincidence and imagination. Whatever you believe, it's a little disconcerting to be here in the building where these guys lived and died. And as we do this also, I would ask you at home to really make the decision to involve yourself in tonight's experiments. Um, there will be a number on the uh, screen that you can call, and please do call if any uh, strange things happen at home that you want to tell us about. Please do call. All right, so one particularly theatrical item that grew out of the Victorian seance period is the spirit cabinet. That's what this is here. All right, and you see it's fairly simple. The medium would be tied up and restrained inside the cabinet. The curtain would be closed all around. And then bizarre paranormal phenomena would occur inside the cabinet, supposedly outside of the medium's control. Uh, for example, a tambourine would move and jangle around, or spirit writing would appear on paper, supposedly from the spirits themselves. And of course, skeptics suggested there was some kind of trickery involved, and very possibly there was. So I'm going to try something tonight that hasn't been done before, and also shouldn't really be done, and that's to put essentially a member of the public in there, rather than me going in there or a medium going in there. Okay, so I'd like to try this, I think, um, maybe first of all with you, if I can. Is that all right? Would you want to just come around for me and come and stand here? Excellent, thank you. It's Jess, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. You see, when you sit in that cabinet and the curtain closes, your state can absolutely just change in an instant. It's very interesting. Would you take a seat for me just there? Excellent. Thanks for doing this, by the way. Okay. Yeah, look at me. Yeah, I'm very happy for you now to do this yourself. Look at my hand. And you can just start to get yourself into a nice, relaxed, sort of, uh, sort of like a trancey medium state that they used to go into, so that the spirits can just play. Excellent. Very nice. You put your hand there, and your hand there, and your feet flat on the floor. Very good. I'm going to move these around you, closing the curtains on all sides. I want you to remain in the state. Just tell me, did you move the tambourine then? No. Did you touch anything? Mm -mm. Did you even move? No. No. Be absolutely honest. Come back to me first of all. Just open your eyes. Just come back to me. Come back to me. Good. Thank you. All right. Did you touch the tambourine? No. No. Did you throw it out the curtain just then? No. No. Sure? Yeah. Okay. Come on for a second. Would you absolutely swear blind that you did not touch that tambourine? I'm positive, yeah. All right. Did you move at all? No. No. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Well, where's it gone? Uh, it's over there at the moment. Did you hear it move? I heard noise. You heard noise, but you didn't touch it? No. All right. Let me just show you, first of all, there's a CCTV camera up there. Okay. We were actually filming that from above. I want to demonstrate something to you here and show you exactly what did just happen in the spirit cabinet. Follow me up here. You need to turn so you can see this. Do I need to rewind this? It's rewound. It's rewound. Okay. Just stand here, Tommy. Okay, now, first of all, that is you, yes? Yes. Not an actress we've got dressed in the same clothes. That is you, yes? No, that's me. Putting your hands on your legs. And your feet flat on the floor. You definitely didn't touch the tambourine. I didn't right. touch it. All right, okay. Sh I didn't do that. I didn't do that. That's you, yes? Yeah. I want you to 
Did you pick it up and throw it out? No. I swear to God, I didn't do that. <laughs> I didn't do that. How does that feel, then, watching that? Confusing. But that is definitely you? Uh-huh. Yes? Yeah. But I didn't... I, honestly, I didn't touch it. All right, have a seat for a second. It is weird, and it is unsettling. It's unsettling because your mind can play this trick on you and make you do things that you've got no awareness of. This is what used to happen in many Victorian seances. The medium would produce phenomena which were fraudulent. But she herself wasn't really a fraud because she had no memory of doing it. She had no awareness of doing it. She absolutely believed they were real. This is called unconscious fraud. And it explains a lot of these things that went on in Victorian seances. Thank you for doing that. I realise it's a, a, a bit freaky to see. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to go? Me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, you okay, cool. go. Cool. Excuse me. Thank you. Take a seat just there for me. Okay. In the spirit cabinet. <laughs> so, first of all, we're going to rule out the possibility of any trickery. I'm going to ask you to keep your eyes open. Mm -hmm. right? You'll be able to see everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to rule out the possibility of unconscious fraud by restraining you in the chair. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Okay, no trickery. You keep your eyes open. Mm -hmm. No unconscious fraud. You can't move. Okay? Yes, yeah, checking it's tight. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So I'm just going to give him a few seconds. And Did you just move the curtain? No. Did you all see that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't because you can't move your no, hands no, and you can't kick that I high. I can't reach all right, it at all. Okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You've broken it, you've broken it. What happened? What happened? I don't know. I just needed to get out. I don't feel right. That's really weird. Talk me through it. Um, you're, sh you're shaking. Bro. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I was sat there. Yeah. You shut the curtain. Yeah. And I just freeze, man. You all right? Feel. Yeah, no. Feel. <sighs> yeah, you should all have a feel. Seriously. <laughs> you're all right? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. Yeah. You broke the, uh, the restraints. <laughs> That was a tough luggage strap. That was really, really weird. That built up. That I just had to get out. <sighs> okay. I'm going to take a, a break and I'll talk to you and make sure that you're okay. Yeah, cheers. All right? Um, <laughs> okay, cheers. So there's a number on the screen. I want you to ring the screen if you feel anything uh, untoward is happening at home. For the next part, you're going to need a pen and paper and something to lean on. Uh, we're going to take a few uh, minutes break and see you in a bit. Okay, have a seat for a minute. Let me just... So welcome back to Elton Hall, uh, where we're going to continue with the seance. So um, I'm going to begin by sending one of you to Corridor G, where 10 of the 12 students lived uh, who lost their lives in the suicide pact. And I'm going to get one of you to go and sit alone in one of those rooms in that corridor for the main part of tonight's experiment to report uh, if anything happens from there. Okay, let me show you the rooms. We've got a CCTV camera in all of them. There's also a chair in each of them, and a whiteboard, and a pen, which are going to be important later on. So whoever goes into that room will be able to see and keep track of, and I'd like that to be um, you, Sally, if that's okay. All right, great. Come with me. <laughs> Excellent. They'll give you instructions on how to get there, all right? Okay, so if you go through there, they'll do that for you now. Cheers. Thanks a lot. They're just around the corner. So Sally is essentially going to go and sit in the dark for a bit on her own with a whole set of expectations in her head and I'm interested to see how uh, that affects her state, whether she um, starts to imagine a, a presence or whatever in the room that she's in. Yes. Is she in the corridor? In the corridor. All right, fantastic. Okay. Oh, there she is. Hi, Sally. Can you hear us? Sally, can you hear us? You're in the 
corridor where 10 students lived, 10 out of 12 students who were manipulated and essentially murdered by a charismatic young man under whose spell they fell. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to walk down the corridor. As you do, I'd like you to have a look at the door numbers. Just have a look at them all. And then you're going to go and stand in front of one of the doors, all right? Yeah. And that will be the um, room that you're going to go into. All right, does that make sense? You're going to stand in front of one of the doors. So just start That's walking fine. down for me now. Just have a look at all the doors as you go. Just really get a sense of that corridor. Look at all the doors, the door numbers. Get a sense of the corridor, a sense of where you are. And just let one of those draw you to it, either the number or the door itself, or a sense of what the room is like behind it. I don't know, but just let one of them draw you to it. Okay, yeah. All right, great. Um, now, there's camera inside to be able to see, but I'd like you to go in for it. It is probably fairly dark in there, so as you go in, just I want you to see where the chair is. So on the chair, there's a few bits and pieces. There's the whiteboard and pen. You'll need to take those off and just put them on the floor. Yeah. Great, just put okay. those on the floor and take a seat, probably. Okay. Now, it's fairly dark in there, but it's not pitch black, is it? The curtains are open, I think, so uh, yeah. your, your eyes will become accustomed to the light in a minute, and you'll be able to see, see what there is. Now, you're right there for a bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. So you're just there to tell us uh, anything that maybe goes on in that room. You're going to keep us posted about what's happening over that side of the building. All right, great. So we're going to come back to you and uh, speak to you in a bit. For now, can we just turn Sally's sound off? Can you hear me now, Sally? Okay, great. Many Victorian mediums claim to be able to tell details about a person's life uh, from photographs of them. And I want to give you guys here and the viewers at home a chance to see what they can sense about our 12 students from photographs of them. Okay? Let me show you this. So I want you just to get a sense of, um, of what these people might have been like. There's also some envelopes in here, which we'll come back to later. There's an envelope for each one of the students. All right. We'll need those later on. For now, let me just lay these out. Debbie, Nigel, Patty, Gary, Dave, Emily, Keith, Jane, Jim, Dave, and Tina and Lena. So all of you guys do have a look at them, and also at home as well, if you want to get close enough to your TV set so that you can see the uh, names clearly under the photographs too. Come in really close. It's really important that you concentrate on this at home and follow the instructions that I give you to the letter. Otherwise, much of tonight's seance will be lost on you. Uh, so this is the sort of exercise which mediums would carry out to see which spirit was going to come through at the seance. So just start off looking at any of the colour pictures, all right? Get a sense of the personality there, and as soon as you get even half a thought, an unconscious impulse about what sort of a personality that is, move your gaze left or right, it doesn't matter, uh, until you get to the nearest black and white one. Okay, do that for me now. Good. All right. Now, that's a different sort of picture, and a different personality will come through. As soon as you've got anything, a thought, whatever, just move up or down this time until you get to the nearest color one. Uh, however many rows, doesn't matter, to the nearest color one, and a different personality coming through this time, maybe a hobby or an interest or some sense of a personality. Good. All right. Immediately now, go diagonally until you get to the nearest black and white photograph. Now, this is supposed to be confusing, but do this for me now. Now you're looking at one of the black and white ones. That's good. Now get a sense of a personality there. Great. Good. Now take a deep breath in. Hold that. Then just move left or right along to the nearest color picture. And then when you've got that, just let the breath out and settle into that picture. And just let a sense of a personality come through the screen at you, through this color picture, one that has drawn you to it, this picture now that you're looking at. As you do that, don't tell anybody the name of this person that has drawn you to him or her. Don't tell anyone what person you're looking at. Just let that personality come through the screen, settle on it, get a sense of this person, and lock this person into your mind. Remember the name, remember the face. Now, obviously, if there really were a spirit coming tonight, you'd all be thinking of the same one. Uh, that's obviously not going to be happening here, but the point is you all now have a name and a face to give to whatever spirit may be trying to get through tonight. And as for you guys here, I'd just like you just to have a look, just pass the photographs around a bit. Just have a look at them, and as you look through them, allow one of the photographs to draw you in. Just have a good look through them, and allow one of those photographs just to really just speak to you in a way, or draw you in. Okay? Thank you for that. 
Great. I'd like you all to uh, grab a chair and uh, pull them in. And to take a seat around the table. Okay, so now we're going to try something called automatic writing. Mediums would take a piece of chalk and a slate, and they'd put the end of the chalk against the slate, and they would allow their hand to write. And the idea was the hand was moving outside of their own conscious awareness, and that it was a spirit that was channeling through them and could give messages for the people at the seance. It's called automatic writing. I'm going to try this with you. Uh, I'm also going to try it with Sally in the room, but I'm going to cover Sally up so that we... Um, well, so that she, what she does in the room doesn't influence what we do here, all right? So, also I would ask people at home if you want to do this too. Obviously at home you won't be channeling any spirits, but um, if you can uh, take part in this, you'll find it interesting just to see what happens and how your hand moves. So would you just take uh, a good seat back just there? That'll be great, thank you. And I'm going to give you a board and a pen. And just rest the end of the nib against the board there. Now just look at me. And what's really important here, again, is that you can allow yourself just to get into a kind of a comfortable, relaxed trance state, which is exactly what the mediums used to do. They used to get... That's very good. Thank you. Just let your eyes close and your head drop down. Okay, great. So, what I'd like you to do, and um, can we get sound contact with Sally, please? Sally, can you hear me? Yeah. Sally as well. I'd like you to pick up the board and pen. Okay. Take the nib off the pen. Yeah and hold the uh, end of the pen just against the board and at home to the same thing with the end of your pen against the paper that you're leaning on. I'm going to start trying to get a bit of information about which uh, spirit, which one of the students we might be contacting tonight. All right? And we're going to try and get where the student lived, what city they came from. So, Amy, all you're going to do is just to imagine uh, whatever the uh, spirit is that you have in mind, whatever student drew you in through her or his picture, just to begin to to move your hand now. And it's a city that you're going to write, but don't think about what you're writing. And also, Sally, as you do this, just allow your hand to write. It doesn't matter what you write. Okay. You just allow the hand to move wherever it wants to go. Okay. Can the camera come in and see this, please, Jono? Can we come in and see this? All right. That's fantastic. I'm going to turn this slightly so the camera can see. Okay. Now, I'm not going to mention the name of the city, but what I'd like you to do is just to come back to me and just open your eyes. Great. Thank you so much. And I'm just going to show everybody here what we've got. Okay. I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want Sally hearing in the other room. Any particular reason why you wrote that without saying what it is? No, I just, I sort of put the pen to it and it sort of did it without even thinking. It was like sort of doing it for me. It was really weird. Really? Yeah. Okay. Really um, now, it's a big city, but obviously you could have written absolutely anything. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go over to um, Sally and find out what she wrote. I'm going to open this now so we can see. I didn't want that influencing you. Um, Sally, just tell us what city did you write? London. Can you hold it up and just show the camera just so we can see that? Yeah, I'm not sure if it's the right way up, but there you go. Well, that's amazing. I mean, London, I suppose, is a fairly large, obvious city. Maybe that's why you both wrote it. I don't know. However, two out of the 12 students, uh, only two, in fact, did come from London. I'm not going to say which two they were because I don't want to influence anything that happens later on. We're now going to take a break. For the next part, you're going to want to get a wine glass and some letters of the alphabet to put around in a circle around the glass. You can use Scrabble tiles or you can just use uh, bits of paper with letters written on them. Um, we're going to use a Ouija board in the next section. If you don't want to do that or you don't want to watch it uh, because you've got objections, religious or otherwise, that's fine. Just please switch off and do not watch the rest of the show. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you in a bit. So we're going to go downstairs and I want to give you the box of envelopes to take down with you, all right? Okay, let's go. My, my grandmother, uh, 
she died yesterday and, and um, I can see her in front of me right now. I can see her face. Great, if you can all uh, we'll come around here for me. Welcome back to Elton Hall, where in 1974, 12 students died in a bizarre suicide pact. So far, we've got that the student or spirit we've contacted seems to be from London. Two of those students are from London. Uh, I'm not going to say which two they are yet. Now, at home, hopefully you've made up something like this. Uh, a wine glass and some letters going around the outside. What I'm using here is an old widgie kit that's been held at the Museum of the Occult in Pennsylvania for some time, which we've, uh, we've borrowed. Um, at home, you're just going to do this with bits of paper and a glass. The board's very old. It goes back to 551 BC, but despite its age, nobody really knows quite what makes it work. And I'd like to do this, I think, with... Um, maybe with you. Can I move you around just to that side? Is that all right? And you here, that'd be great. And perhaps... Um, is it John? Can you come through just here into the center? That's great. And I'd like you three just to place your fingers for me. It's both fingers like this on the bowl of the glass. Both fingers of both hands. All right. So just everybody, just for a moment, just concentrating here on the top of the glass. Now, the way this works is you just allow the glass, when we ask questions, to just move and go where it wants to go. You don't push it, but you don't stop it either. Right? Now, the first question we always ask of the board is, is there a spirit present? And if there is, the glass will move to the letter Y, that's Y for yes, which is down here at the moment by Holly. And at home you do the same thing if you haven't already. Place your fingers on the bowl of the glass and concentrate on the glass as you do this. You just allow it to move. You don't push it, but you don't stop it either. You ready? You ready? You happy to do this? So let's ask. Is there a spirit present? It's okay, we can just wait. And at home as well, you may find this takes a while before it starts to move. It's focusing on the top of the glass. Okay, let's just stop there for a second and move your fingers from the glass. Okay, that's fine. Let me just maybe move a couple of you around. So, uh, do you want to go around there, Amy? Okay. Let me change you for Clayton. Clayton, can you come here? Thank you. It's really important that you absolutely focus on the glass. Take a deep breath in. And out. Is there a spirit present? Whoa. Don't stop it, don't freak out. Just keep watching it, keep watching the glass and just let it go. It'll pick up speed if it wants to. And it'll take a moment to find the board, as it's called, to uh, settle on where the letters are. Keep it going, keep focusing on it. It'll take a moment to do this. Doing brilliantly, just let it go to the letter it wants to. Just keep focusing on the glass. When it's found the board and the shape of the board, it'll settle on the letter it wants to, and then you feel it just stop. It stopped. Yeah, okay. Let go for a second. You alright? Yeah. You done anything like that before? No. 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 Alright. But the skeptics say they're just pushing the glass around. Were no. you pushing the glass? No. No? No way. No. Were you pushing no. it, Clayton? No. You weren't pushing no. it. No, neither of you were. Alright, and also I want to point out there's nothing on the glass, nothing that makes it move. Have a look, hang on to that for a second. Have a look under this. It's just a bit of plywood. The letters are stuck down, no. but it's just a bit of plywood. There really is nothing. Nothing on there. Alright. You happy with that? Mm. Yeah. All right, fingers back on the glass. We'll do it again. Okay, so now we're going to ask the spirit its name. You all right? Carry on. Yeah. Okay, fingers back on there. Here's what I want you all to do. And at home, I want you to do the same thing. You put your fingers on the glass. All of you have in mind the name of one of the students that drew you to it through the pictures. All right? So what I need you all to do for me is to think of the name of the student that you have in mind. If there really were a spirit trying to get through here, we would all be thinking of the same name because that picture would have drawn us all to it. That's probably not going to happen, but just concentrate on the name that you have in mind and we'll just let whatever comes through happen. Spirit, spirit, 
Tell us your name. Tell us. Now you might also find this starts to get quite fast, all right? And it can be a little odd. Okay, that's a letter, that's a, that's a J, all right? Let's just let it keep going. You might find it picks up speed, that it starts to get a bit brutal. That's fine, you just keep going with it, don't let it freak you out. A. You okay? N. Whoa! Okay, all right. Okay, let's take a second. So, the name Jane was spelt. What was that like? What was that like? What did that feel like? Well, it's what I was thinking of. It's exactly what Mark was thinking of. It's the name that I was thinking of, that that was your picture. You're right. You're okay. It's okay. All right, so... You were, th we, we, you were, yeah, I was confused. You were all, it was Jane's photograph that drew you to it? Yeah. All of you? Yeah. Yeah. No. Not you? I didn't know. I didn't mean Who did you have? I had Patty. Patty? I had Tina. Tina? Anybody else? Jane. 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 All right, okay, all right, okay. That's ten of you who had Jane, all right, out of twelve. But we shouldn't get too carried away with this because there are also potentially a million, two million people uh, doing this and joining in at home. And obviously we don't know what picture drew them in and we don't know what they began to spell out on the board. So we're only ten people out of you know, a much larger number, so we mustn't get carried away, although it does seem uh, mathematically quite uh, extraordinary. And I think Jane was one of, yeah, can you have a look in there, get Jane's, um, have each got an envelope? Just go through, find Jane's envelope for me. All right. Okay, what I want you to do, can we also let, just let the camera see this, just... Pop it on there for me. Can you just let, can we let the camera see? The, can you read out? <laughs> just read out what it says. Just read it from here. Let me just put it in there. So the uh, Amy, can you just read that? Okay. Her name was Jane Dowie, address 13 Glenwood Road, London. Lived in room G7 and trained at Alton Hall from 1970 to 1974. Four. That's this, yeah, it's Glentworth Road and it's difficult to read upside down. But mm. she was one of the students from London. Yeah, it is a bit weird. And I think, I have a feeling that G7... Um, can we get sound contact with Sally, please? Hang on, we get sound contact with Sally. Sally, can you hear us? I want to know the room number that you're in. Okay, I think we've, okay, we've lost sound contact with Sally. We'll just get that back. Sally, can you hear us? Sally? <laughs> Sally, can you hear us? Yeah. Oh, God. Sally, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes? Yeah. Can you just tell us, because we didn't see you earlier on, can you remember the, the number of the room that you're in at the moment? Number seven. Oh, God. All right, okay, that's, that's, not, that's not right. <sighs> All right, okay, listen, Sally, it turns out I think you're actually in the room number that the student that we've contacted, Jane, it was her room, all right? It was her room. All right, so we're going to come and get you. We're going to come and take you out now. Oh, thank God for that. All right? Ah! Are you okay? No, no. What's... what's... Darren? Yes? Please, just let me Yeah, we're, co we're coming to get you now. Someone's coming yeah, to get you now. Are you all right? Pardon? Oh, oh. Pardon? Just... We just come quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're coming to get you right now. Someone's on their way. Darren, all right? just don't let anything happen to me. Nothing's going to happen. You're fine. Oh, they're, coming, they're coming to get you now. Yeah, stand by the door, okay? Yeah, you stand by the door. We'll be there just one second. Someone's coming to get you right just out. Just be quick, please, don't. Okay. Um, we're going to take a break. Uh, Sally's uh, just been taken out of the room now. We're going to take a break for the next part. Uh, it's going to happen in pitch black. At home, you may wish to uh, turn the lights out in your own room. I need you just to fold it up and put it in your pocket. We'll need Jane's envelope in the other room. Okay, you all all right? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Hi, Darren. It's uh, Stuart. I actually saw um, the movement behind the curtain. And uh, at a corresponding time in my flat, I, I just felt this push in the back. Uh, so, <laughs> that was pretty amazing. Anyway, thanks. Bye. Oh, my God. It was so, so weird. My wardrobe, it just jerked. It jerked. It's on the other side of the room, and it jerked. I don't know what the hell happened. It jerked. This is freaky, man. This is proper freaky. I never believed it before, but, oh, my God, it's freaky. Um, so, we're now going to go through to um, 
the room that belonged to Nicholas Gad, and this is the room where the suicide pact was carried out. Okay, it's the room where they killed themselves. Not surprisingly, it's also the room with the largest amount of paranormal phenomena associated with it. All right, so we'll uh, we'll go through. Do you want to follow me? It's just the weirdest thing. I I was just watching a TV program and I wrote London too. I had no control. It's not even my handwriting, and I just had this overwhelming sense that it had to be London. Weird. Thank you very much. Okay. Do you want to just sort of come and have a seat around the table? Okay, uh, and at home as well, if you haven't already, you need to turn the lights out in your room so that you are doing this in the dark as well. Okay, uh, Sally, you're back with us. How are you doing? I'm so grateful to you guys. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you again and make sure you know that you're all fine and so on yeah. and that everything's good. Okay, so a spirit would always announce its arrival at a seance by causing a bell to ring. Okay, and this is, this is a spirit bell. You can see it's just a metal frame with a little bell on the top there. The cup here is actually an athletics prize that we tracked down for the year that the suicides took place. The idea is that you use objects which will be familiar to the spirits or somehow from the same period. The ball is actually a seance ball. The idea is it's fairly light and sort of easy for the, uh, for the spirits to affect. Okay? You can see they're all daubed with luminous paint. This is so that you can see them in the dark. So now one of you has to be a medium for the purposes of the seance. Uh, it's not going to be me, but I will help you and guide you through it. So I'm going to choose one of you at random. Um, and I've got 11 cards here for you. Uh, Sally, I don't think you should get through this. <laughs> so um, I'm going to draw a cross on one of them. Mix these up. and basically just ask you each just to take one. Don't look at them yet. But whoever's got the cross will be the medium, all right? So if you just, just sort of spread them out a bit on the table. And just pull them over to you, but don't, don't look at them yet. Now, obviously none of you is a medium, nor has trained to be one. But whoever holds the cross at the moment will absolutely become an effective medium for the seance. That means you will be able to channel the spirit of Jane... And when I talk to you, you'll be able to answer me as Jane and absolutely, uh, absolutely be her. Okay? So just all turn over your cards. Who's got the cross? Holly. Can you just show the camera just so... Uh... Great. Thank you. All right. So, Holly, basically, Jane will be able to come through you. I'll talk you through it, and then at a certain point, I will say... Jane, are you there? Jane, uh, can I speak to you? And at that point, you're just going to let her come through. You happy doing that? Yep. I <laughs> think so. Okay, all right. Um, this is the time for the camera crew to leave, so I'd like you guys to go, uh, which will leave just us alone in the room with um, remote control cameras, night vision cameras that are around the room, all right? Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm going to ask you all to join hands with the people on either side of you, so do that now. Okay. Everybody just take a deep breath in. And out. And in. You're breathing at the same rate and speed as each person on either side of you. Not only that, but you're breathing in unison with everybody in the circle. You must now keep this circle unbroken. You keep tight hold of the person on either side of you. Whatever you do, you keep the circle unbroken. And Holly, as we do this, I want you just to begin to allow Jane's presence to just form. You'll be able to do this brilliantly, and you just let that start to come to the surface now and just feel that in there. What I want everybody now to do in the room is to move into a welcoming state. I want you to think of a time when you've really been eager to see somebody. Maybe somebody you're meeting at an airport that you haven't seen for a long time. Somebody that you are in love with or somebody that you really want to see and you really want to welcome them. And Jane, we welcome you here in this room. The 13 of us welcome you here. Everybody now, again, just focusing on the breathing as well with your eyes open, breathing in. And then letting it out. And in. And out. 
And Jane, now, as we sit here in this room, we welcome you here. We make this a place of welcoming for you. Holly, I would like you to say to Jane now that she is welcome to be here in the room. Will you say that for me? Jane, you're welcome to be here in the room. That's right. Absolutely welcome just here in the room, Jane. I want you to feel comfortable, and I want you to make your presence felt by moving the cup for us. Holly, I want you to ask Jane to show her presence by moving the cup. Jane, show your presence by moving the cup. Just be present here in the room, Jane. Be here amongst us. Be welcome here. And just moving the cup, Jane, just to let us know that you're here and feel welcome in the room. Okay, we're going to turn our attention to the ball instead. Everybody focusing on the ball. Jane, just allow your presence now to be felt just by moving the ball for us so we can see that you're here. Holly, ask Jane to show us that she's here by moving the ball to let us know that she's here. Jane, move the ball to let us, let us know that you are here. That's right. As we welcome Jane into the room. Just allowing that presence to be here. Okay. Let's turn our attention back to the car. <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Keep the circle. Keep the circle unbroken. 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 Jane? Jane, you talk to us now. Be here. How old are you? Six. Jane, what can you see? What are you aware of? There's lots of people around. And what are they doing? They look like they're having fun. <laughs> and where are you, Jane? Are you happy? Yeah, I'm in my house. <laughs> and what's happening in your house? Everyone's here. The That's... whole village. Everyone. The whole village. Everyone's there. Okay, that's really good. Is there anybody there you can go and play with? Anybody you know? Yeah, I've got lots of friends here. Can you go and play with your best friend? Is she there? Yeah. What's her name? Lucy. Lucy, excellent. Well, I'd like you to go and I'd like you to go and play with Lucy. Is that all right? So I can talk to you when you're a little bit older. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay, so you go and play with Lucy. That's right, so I can talk to you when you're a little bit older. I'm going to talk to you when you're 15, Jane. So just come to us now, Jane, when you're 15. Jane, are you there? How old are you now? 15. Good. Okay, Jane, I want you to be welcome here. Are you happy to talk to us for a little bit? Yeah. Good, okay. I'm going to ask you a few questions, if that's all right, a few questions about yourself. Okay. Um, Jane, you had or have a, a cat, yes? Mm -hmm. What's the name of the cat? Tell us the name of the cat. Harry. Harry. Okay. Thank you for that. And everybody, just breathing and just focusing. That's great. It's just being a nice welcoming place. That's good. And Jane, there's a train ride. You used to go and see your grandmother on the train. Uh-huh. That's right. Because she wasn't well, was she? No, she was really poorly. Okay. Can you tell us where that was? Where did you go on the train? London. To London. Okay. What does your father do for a living, Jane? He's a builder. A builder? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Thank you. I think, Jane, um, I'm going to ask you to leave us now. Thank you for being here and being comfortable with us and comfortable to talk to us, okay? So I'm going to let you go now. Is that all right? That's fine. Thank you, Jane. You, you can go now. Go now, Jane. Thank you. I'm going, to light, I'm going to light the candle. Keep the circle. I'm going to just unbreak the circle here and I'm going to light the candle. Are you okay, Richard? Everybody all right? Hang on, hang on. Okay, hang on. Okay, we're going to turn the light on. We're going to bring the camera crew back in. Can we get the crew in, please? Can we just bring the camera what, crew? Everyone's screaming. I just heard these two screaming. I'm screaming. 
Fucking hell. Did anybody else see that ball coming yes. straight in yes. my head? It was a blood in my head. Are you all right? Okay, I want to ask you individually things about what you were feeling, all right? Because it's really important as well that we, that we know that. So, Holly, what, what, what were you just saying? I could tell there was movement in the darkness. There was something moving round in front of me, and it was like it was bouncing off these two and coming back into me. And what about the... Because I asked you some questions, uh, or asked Jane some questions through you, as it were, during that. Those answers that you were giving, I mean, where were they coming from as far as you were concerned? No idea. No idea, okay. You can remember the answers that you gave? Mm. Yeah. You mentioned a cat called Harry, mm -hmm. a train ride to London. Um, although we had the, uh, the only address we had for her was uh, a London address, but I think uh, when she was younger, she didn't live in London, she lived elsewhere. Didn't um, I say I village somewhere? Yeah, I think it was somewhere around Manchester, I think. I think we did have the details on that, but the, mm. the, address, the address of when she was older, when she was... Uh, why are you smiling? Because oh, earlier when we were doing the board yeah. and um, we were all talking about what city what? we were to put and I said Manchester. Yeah, you said Manchester. Manchester. Really? Yeah. 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 <laughs> that is so weird. Okay. Um, and you mentioned that you, the, the father was a builder. All right, but it's really important that I ascertain those answers were... They didn't relate to anything I, you know, anyone or me had said to you earlier on or yeah. anything you'd done earlier on. There was no prepping. You had no idea what you were going to say. It was just... Just completely from her, obviously. So you, you know Holly a bit. What was that like, knowing her and being next to her and feeling that? It was in her voice. Yeah. And it was just like... It was just so strange and she was, like, rocking and I, it just wasn't her and that was what scared me the most. It just wasn't her at all. All right, um... Jess, you've got an envelope. This is Jane's envelope. Let me just explain about this. If you open it up, there's a couple of things in there. I want you to take out what's inside. Um, I'll explain what we did. We got a friend or relative, somebody that was still alive, of each of the students, to just write us a little thing about what sort of a person they were, just a, a couple of paragraphs about that. Um, there's also for each one... Ah, yeah. The disc here is... Um, a disc that we had made of, uh, which we had transferred of some home movie footage as well that we were able to get. We got something personal for each one of them too. And I think in this case it was Jane's brother that did this for us. Holly, I was going to ask you to put the disc into the DVD player behind you. Press play if you can see that. It'll take a second to come through. That's great. Can you just open the letter for me? I'd like you to read it out just as we... <coughs> Dear Darren, Jane was an incredibly affectionate and loving sister, as well as being intelligent. I could talk to her about anything. I miss her greatly after her tragic death. Although she never fulfilled her ambition of qualifying for a nurse, her training could not have been better timed as Jane often used to catch a train to London to tend to her grandmother during her illness. It was in her nature to be caring when she was younger. She pretended that Harry, her cat, was ill so that she could look after him. Our dad, until his early retirement, he worked as a builder and he was also extremely proud of her. With thanks, Mark Dowie. Thanks for reading it out. Okay. Um, that's it. All right, we're not going to do anything else. And I really want to thank you for doing this. It's been quite, <laughs> quite a ride. And I hope you sort of look back on this as something quite exhilarating. Um, it was, for me, I mean, it was a psychological um, 
experiment. I mean, that's what I do, and you, you, you know that. And I knew when you were looking at the photographs and the way that I arranged the photographs and the instructions that I gave you, I knew that most of you, if not all of you, but most of you would, would be drawn to Jane, and I knew that that one seed would be planted. And I knew that from that you would create a seance around you. Um, and the, the Ouija board is a really interesting phenomenon. It works by something called idiomotor suggestion. You do actually push the glass yourself. You just have no awareness of doing it. Uh, and we've got a room upstairs with some uh, pizza and drinks and thing in it. So I, we'll go up there and I'll just talk to you a bit more about it all and make sure you're all absolutely okay. Sally, you've been astounding and thank you for that. And Holly, thank you for being just, just great with that. Okay. Uh, before you, give us something I'd like to show you. I need to show you something. Just stay there for a second for me. Hi, um, I'm doing the, the lettering thing at home on my own. Um, I've spelled out Jane. Um, I don't know what's happening. I've got really upset and I'm in tears. This is really freaky. Um, my name is Tanya. Thanks. Bye. Hiya. Hiya. Hello. How are you doing? Excellent, cool. Okay. Um, all right, okay, I'm going to take you in. Are you cold now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's freezing, isn't it? Let's uh, go in and meet the guys.